Jeremiah chapter 18. The word of the Lord came the word of the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying Arise and go down to the potter's house there I will cause thee to hear my word. So God's going to give him an illustration. God does this often. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold he wrought a work on the wheel. So he's making a vase, he's making something of clay. <clears throat> and why is God using this illustration? Because we're clay. According to Genesis chapter 2, a little water and a little dust is what we are. Now he's going to liken Israel to pottery. And he doesn't even say what the pottery is. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold he wrought a work on the wheel. Have you ever heard the word wrought iron? It means to do something with it, to, to work it. And the vessel, Romans 9.20, that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he's got something on the wheels, he's working with it, and it became something went wrong. We don't know what kind of vessel. But in his hand, something did not go right. So he made it again, another vessel. So he smushed it all together, mushed it back into a big lump. He made another vessel. And with dealing with the men in prison, they used to do a lot of things, but now they're in prison. And I got to tell them, you know, you can't go back, like a few of them, you know, I, I was a preacher and all that, but you can't go back to the pulpit. And I, I don't even know what their crime is. But you've been mushed on the wheel. You were a vessel for God for honor, and you did something that marred your life, and you've got to make another vessel. God intended us for a reason. What is that reason? I have no idea. I don't even know what the fullness of God called me for, never mind anybody else. And I know in my life I have been mushed and put back into another lump to be made another vessel. And this is Israel. This is Judah. God had never intended them to be where they are today. And just sin after sin, false worship, idolatry, imagery. It's not what God intended. And then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Can I start over? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. So clay is a type of Judah. The potter is a type of God. How many times in our, in our life has God had to... Well, got to make something else. And a little thing. Listen, that potter could be making something on that, on that wheel and it's coming out gray and you find a little piece of straw that was missed. You may find a little stone that was missed. That clay may not yield to what a bend or a hole or a whatever the potter has in mind. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to, to pull down, and to destroy it. You know, it's... You don't want to do right. You don't want to be yielded to the potter's hand. You're going to be smashed and smushed. But he does not throw the clay away. He just puts it back on that wheel and he's going to make something else. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, that's a definition of repent. I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Nineveh is a prime example of Jonah 3 4. 
at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation. And it could be any nation. And concerning a kingdom. To build and to plant it. Verses 7 and 8 is for a nation that is wicked and sinning. America. And if she would repent and get right. God will not do evil to them. And when this and I shall speak concerning the nation, concerning the kingdom, the build, and the planet, I want to do something with this nation. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherein I said I would benefit them. And that's what's happening to America today. America has a chance to repent and get right, and God won't do the judgment. But she was right. She was obeying, but now she's not. And God said, I'll repent of the good I was doing for her, or any nation. Germany, you want to keep attacking those Jews, I mean, I'm going to curse you, because you're cursing them. Now, therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah. And to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you. Now, evil is the consequences of your sin. And devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way. He wants you to repent and make your ways and you're doing good. God is calling for that nation. I just come on out and just repent. And they said, there is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices. We will, we will everyone do the imaginations of his heart, uh, of his evil heart. They're not going to repent. They're not going to get right. They're even going to get worse. You notice how Jeremiah 18 chapters, heart, 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 heart. Wickedness, wickedness, wickedness. Verse 11, Jeremiah is told by God, just tell them repent. And they said, there's no hope for repentance. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, ask ye now among the heathen. Who has heard such a thing? The virgin of Israel has done a very horrible thing. Pure. These people that were pure have committed a spiritual adultery. Will a man leave the snow in Lebanon which cometh from the rock of the field? Now, Lebanon is a very fruitful, fruitful area of land. And it snows. And the Bible tells us that snow has fertilizing properties. W would you leave that field that you can plant and do things with? Or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? I mean, you're in a desert area. I mean, wouldn't you just like to have a good cold drink of water? Would you leave that? You have to look at the tree in chapter 17. We read in verse 8. They do. They leave God's blessings and they're going to go to Babylon. Because my people have forsaken, have forgotten me. So verse 14 is, no, they're not going to stay. They're not going to do right. They have burnt incense to vanity. They have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient past. Isaiah 45, 21 to 23. To walk in paths in a way not cast up, but down. They're not walking the way God wants them to walk. They're not going where God wants them to go. To make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. When they see Jerusalem, when they see Judah destroyed, it's going to be 
Look at that. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them I will show them back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Then then said they come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. What a what a reaction. How can we shut this guy up? For the law shall not perish from the priests, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us smite him with the tongue. Let's lie about him. Let's say bad things about him. And let us not give heed to any of his words. Now his words are God's words. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. The ten is, you know, they're, they're fighting against them. Jeremiah is having a rough time. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them. And to turn away thy wrath from them. Romans 12, 17. And that's exactly what Moses did. Moses, Moses kept interceding for them people. For God was ready to wipe them out. Jeremiah has prayed for them. He has spoken what God has told him to speak. And he's getting hatred. Jeremiah is a type of Lord Jesus Christ. All the good that Jesus did, all he got was hate and people speaking against him. When they were looking for false witnesses to, to testify against Jesus, they said, I believe as many had come, but they couldn't agree amongst themselves. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine. It's a good prayer, for Jeremiah. Jeremiah's had it with them. And pour out their blood by the force of the sword. War. And let their wives be bereaved of their children. Death. And be widows. Death of the husbands of the children. And let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. War. Let a cry be heard from their houses. Like it was the night that the deaf angel went through Egypt. They say there was a great and bitter cry that night. When thou shalt bring a troop army suddenly upon them, for they have digged a pit to take me and hid snares from my feet. Well, Jeremiah is getting a little personal. Lord, I want vengeance because they hate me. That's what it says. Yet, Lord... Thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity. Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Neither blot out their sins from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of their anger. Wow, what, a, what an angry prophet. What a man of God. You imagine if, he, if that was a message he did in the city streets as a street preacher? He has no love. Well, neither did they. They didn't listen. They didn't obey. They had no regard. And Jeremiah's like, I've had it. His own people trying to kill. They're digging pits for them. They're talking about it. He, he's not the proper guy in the streets. They're telling lies about him. And Jeremiah, he's a man. No better than you or me.